the defendant, Lucy Letby, has refused to attend court for this sentence hearing. Accordingly, I have to sentence her in her absence. I shall deliver the sentencing remarks as if she was present to hear them, and I direct that she is provided with a transcript of my remarks and copies of the victim personal statements read to the court. Lucy Letby, over a period of almost 13 months between June 2015 and June 2016, when in your mid-twenties and employed as a neonatal nurse in the Countess of Chester Hospital in Chester with specialist training in intensive care, you murdered seven babies and attempted to murder six others. In the case of one of them, trying on separate occasions two weeks apart to murder her. You are now to be sentenced for your crimes. I order payment of the statutory surcharge in the appropriate amount. You acted in a way that was completely contrary to the normal human instincts of nurturing and caring for babies and in gross breach of the trust that all citizens place in those who work in the medical and caring professions. The babies you harmed were born prematurely and some were at risk of not surviving. But in each case, you deliberately harmed them, intending to kill them. In your evidence, you said that hurting a baby is completely against everything that being a nurse is, as indeed it should be. You also claimed you never did anything that was meant to hurt a baby and only ever did your best to care for them. That was but one of the many lies you were found to have told in this case. There is no doubt that you are intelligent and outwardly were a very conscientious, hardworking, knowledgeable, confident and professional nurse, which enabled you repeatedly to harm babies on the unit without arousing suspicion for some time. You prided yourself in your competence. Your fellow neonatal nurses spoke very highly of you and several of them became your close friends. Having started as a band five nurse at the Countess of Chester in 2012, you became a mentor to student nurses and in the spring of 2015, gained the qualification that enabled you to care for the sickest babies on the, units, on the unit or those requiring the most intensive care. You relished being in the intensive care nursery. Your messages to colleagues revealed an interest in babies that were on or were coming to the unit who had uncommon medical conditions. The methods you employed to carry out your murderous intent were only revealed by the later detailed investigation into the events of and surrounding the collapses and deaths of the babies, which commenced in 2018. There was premeditation, calculation, and cunning in your actions. You specifically targeted twins and latterly triplets. Some babies were healthy. Others had medical issues of which you were aware. The great majority of your victims suffered acute pain as a result of what you did to them. They all fought for survival. Some, sadly, struggled in vain and died. You used a number of different ways to try to kill them, thereby misleading clinicians into believing the collapses had, or might have had, a natural cause, or were a consequence of a developing medical condition. You took opportunities to harm babies when staff were in breaks, or away from babies. On some occasions, you falsified records 
to indicate there were signs of a deterioration before a collapse occurred. You knew that the last thing anyone working in the unit would or did think was that someone caring for the babies was deliberately harming them. As the number of unexpected and unexplained collapses and deaths escalated, senior doctors started to think the unthinkable and consider the possibility that someone was, in fact, deliberately harming the babies, and you were identified as the common factor. You had a detached enthusiasm for the resuscitations and what followed. You endeavoured to impress colleagues and clinicians and sought reassurance from them as to your competence and skills and would message others to the effect that no one was at fault. On occasions, you cruelly and callously made inappropriate remarks to some of the grieving parents at the time of or in the immediate aftermath of a death. When the homes of both you and your parents were searched, confidential documents relating to babies, including handover and resuscitation sheets and notes and blood gas readings were found. And there were entries in a diary recording relevant events. Handover sheets relating to all but the first four of the babies had been taken from the unit and kept by you. I am satisfied you started to keep these documents after those initial offences in June 2015 as morbid records of the dreadful events surrounding the collapses of your victims and what you had done to them. You had a fascination with the babies and their families, which extended to making repeated searches on Facebook for their parents, sometimes immediately following the events and on occasions much later. A piece of paper with dent writing on both sides, setting out your thoughts and feelings, was found in the first search of your home in 2018. Amongst the phrases you wrote were, the world is better off without me, and I am evil, I did this. The impact of your crimes has been immense, as disclosed by the deeply moving personal statements that have been read to the court this morning. The lives of newborn or relatively newborn babies were ended almost as soon as they began, and lifelong harm has been caused, all in horrific circumstances. Loving parents have been robbed of their cherished children, and others have to live with the physical and mental consequences of your actions. Siblings have been deprived of brothers and sisters, you have caused deep psychological trauma, brought enduring grief and feelings of guilt, caused strains in relationships and disruption to the lives of all the families of all your victims. It is no part of my function to reach conclusions as to the underlying reason or reasons for your actions. Nor could I, for they are, they are known only to you. I must pass appropriate sentences according to law, addressing the seriousness of your offences, the cruelty and calculation of your actions were truly horrific. After these last collapses and deaths, you were suspended from nursing duties, but, but pursued complaints of being treated unfairly. When your home was later searched, as well as your 2016 diary, which contained references to long days on the 23rd, 24th and 25th of June, and to J, E and M, respectively. There were handover sheets over that period with resuscitation notes written on the back. All, I have no doubt, being records that you kept to remind you of the details of the consequences of what you had done to those children. For the offence of murder, the sentence is fixed by law and is imprisonment for life. 
you are now 33 years of age and were over 21 when you committed the offences. Pursuant to the relevant prevailing statutory regime, by having regard to Schedule 21 to the Criminal Justice Act 2003, I have to determine whether the seriousness of the offences of murder, individually or in combination, is so exceptionally high that I should not make a minimum term order and you should spend the rest of your life in prison. For offences of attempted murder, whole life sentences of imprisonment are reserved for wholly exceptional cases. Over a period of just under 13 months, you killed seven fragile babies and attempted to kill six others. Some of your victims were only a day or a few days old. All were extremely vulnerable. They were in a hospital where others were striving to provide them with dedicated medical and nursing care. By their nature and number, such murders and attempted murders by a neonatal nurse entrusted to care for them are offences of very exceptional seriousness. The damaging impact of your actions on others working at that hospital, including those who numbered you as a friend, betraying their trust and creating upset and suspicion, as well as eroding confidence in clinicians and nurses generally, aggravates their seriousness. This was a cruel, calculated and cynical campaign of child murder involving the smallest and most vulnerable of children, knowing that your actions were causing significant physical suffering and would cause untold mental suffering. You created situations so that collapses or causes of collapses would not be obvious or associated with you. You removed and retained confidential records of events relating to your crimes and checked up on bereaved parents. There was a deep malevolence bordering on sadism in your actions. During the course of this trial, you have coldly denied any responsibility for your wrongdoing and sought to attribute some fault to others. You have no remorse. There are no mitigating factors. In their totality, the offences of murder and attempted murder were of exceptionally high seriousness and just punishment, according to law, requires a whole life order. Lucy Letby, on each of the seven offences of murder and the seven offences of attempted murder, I sentence you to imprisonment for life. Because the seriousness of your offences is exceptionally high, I direct that the early release provisions do not apply. The order of the court, therefore, is a whole life order on each and every offence and you will spend the rest of your life in prison. <laughs>